Reese from accounting is working from home when suddenly the file they're working on is closed and their desktop background displays a confusing message about how to get their files back. Uh-oh. Hopefully this isn't related to that weird email IT sent last week. Welcome to another episode of Once Upon an Attack, a web series by the Splunk Education Team in which we learn about common cybersecurity threats and attacks. Today, we'll talk about ransomware. Ransomware is a type of malware that encrypts files on a machine or a network, making them unusable for the owner. Then it offers instructions on how to pay the attacker, usually in cryptocurrency, in exchange for the decryption key. Cybercriminals utilize this technique and target individuals for smaller payments, or businesses of all sizes for a larger payout. If the affected user or organization does not have a backup of their critical data, or if their backup is part of the encrypted assets, then paying the ransom is the only way in which a user can recover their data, and the only way in which some businesses can remain operational. It used to be that only advanced cybercriminals capable of setting their own phishing and command and control infrastructure could successfully use ransomware for financial gain. But nowadays, ransomware kits and infrastructure are sold or rented through the dark web. Not only this, but in some cases, an entire customer support infrastructure has been built to guide victims, of all skill levels, on the most efficient way to pay the ransom. So how or why was Reese targeted? Attackers may target exposed networks on their own but they may also just buy access to already compromised hosts. Or they can create phishing campaigns to trick users to execute a file, giving them access to the internal network. Attackers still have to be careful though. If they send the phish to too many employees, its suspicious nature may get people talking, and the phishing attempt may be discovered before it is successful. So they tend to target individuals with likely increased access, but whom they think will have limited IT knowledge, like our friend Reese, who has access to accounting information. Attackers will usually have to acquire or set up their own command and control, or C2 infrastructure, to issue commands on compromised hosts. They may also need to set up phishing infrastructure to ensure their emails are not blocked automatically. Next, they'll have to make a convincing phishing template, or use an example from their purchased kit. Because this requires some sort of execution by the user, rather than just a convincing credential harvesting page, they will often portray themselves as IT, or a legitimate tech platform, so the user is more likely to download and execute files or enable macros inside of a document. Once the victim falls for the fish and executes the required step to give the attacker access to their device, the attacker can take action from there and the next stage of their operation begins. Since the attacker already has access, they may attempt lateral movement to other machines or accounts with something like a password spray to gain additional access over time. Attackers may employ discovery tactics to get a better idea of network size, account privileges on their compromised host, and file access permissions they might have. More sophisticated operations may use this information to execute a double extortion technique, where they exfiltrate sensitive files before they encrypt. Now the ransom is not only for decrypting files, but also so they won't publish sensitive company or customer information and further impact the business. Yikes. Because a ransom set too high cannot feasibly be paid, or they can miss out on potential profit if set too low, the attacker will usually perform additional research or reconnaissance on a target company so they can set a realistic ransom amount. They may scour public resources or utilize their internal access to determine yearly revenue, net worth, or operating expenses. Once they've quietly completed their initial discovery, lateral movement, and exfiltration tactics via command and control, the victim's files are finally encrypted as quickly as possible to prevent detection or containment. 
And this is where we caught up with our friend Reese today, with the background image of their machine explaining why their files are blocked, and further instructions to contact the attacker and obtain a decryption key. At this stage, some ransomware operations may simply respond by email, while others have an entire customer support portal with friendly language, helpful links, and live agents. The victim may be able to negotiate the price, but ultimately they will need to buy cryptocurrency and send it to an attacker's crypto wallet if they want a decryption key. Some older encryption schemes may already be cracked, but it is usually only after the method has been publicly released for no cost on the dark web and is used by less mature attackers. As for our friend Reese, luckily their IT team had automatic backups and they were able to get their machine rebuilt with minimum data loss. They know they were lucky and have promised to never download and execute files from emails without confirming it's from a legitimate source. The security operations team has also launched an investigation to ensure no other machines in the network have been compromised. Now you see why cybercriminals continue to rely on this effective method. It is important for companies to not only have effective backups, but also a plan to recover their business for those backups should they need to. Security tools can prevent or detect some of these attacks, but attackers are always evolving, so security awareness training for all users will always be essential. To learn more about these types of attacks and how Splunk can support your efforts against them, visit the links in the description. For getting started guides and product tips, please visit Splunk Lantern. We also suggest you check out the documentation, watch additional videos on the Splunk How-To channel, and register for courses from Splunk Education. Once Upon an Attack was brought to you as part of the Blue Team Academy Cybersecurity Defense Analyst Program. Thanks for watching.